We're going to hear from Let's now from our race winner and uh, two-time NASCAR Camping World Truck Series champion, certainly a very yeah. worthy and deserving champion, Matt Crafton. Matt wins tonight's Ford EcoBoost 200. He's the driver of the number 88 Ideal Door Menards Toyota. And uh, he's joined by a crew chief, Junior Joiner. Six wins in 2015 for uh, Matt Crafton. His first win at Homestead Miami Speedway. Matt, you had him covered up here tonight. Talk about your, your win here tonight. I'm sure you would have liked to got that third straight championship. But overall, your thoughts about tonight's win and then the season in total. Uh, tonight's win was awesome. I said we last two years we haven't been able to race here and be able to take the gloves off and don't have to worry about a championship and just go out and do win. And that's all we had to do is just worry about win. And I said there was nothing else was going to be make us happy. And so that's what we did tonight. And we had a phenomenal season, six wins and 700. And I don't think they said 780 laps. I think we led. That's a pretty good season. We just had one column that was bad for us. I mean, just the DNFs and we just had, I made mistakes. Everybody made mistakes, but I promise you one thing, it's going to make us stronger for 2016. And Junior Joiner, certainly uh, championships uh, uh, have been in your all's vocabulary the past few years and uh, getting that sixth win here tonight. Let's talk about the, the, the victory here tonight, winning first time for Matt Crafton at Homestead Miami. Speedway and then yet also just your as you look back on the on the two titles you all have won. Let's talk about how good I make him look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I, I can't say enough about him and, and our whole Menards Tundra team. Uh, Everybody just steps up their game each and every week. And I feel like every time we build a truck, it's better, you know, and, and I everyone tries to do that. But we just seem to take it to another level on our little island up there in Sandusky and uh, Thanks to Duke and Rhonda Thorson, she's triad man. They've <clears throat> they've stepped up their game like immensely. It's uh, it's really nice to just uh, you know, on one hand we lost our fuel mileage, but I told they asked me if I wanted it back, and I said absolutely not. <laughs> I want the horsepower, and we'll lead laps, and we'll figure out how to win races, and that's what we've done. So um, again, I I kind of like this guy. I don't think I'll trade him for anyone. Questions now for either Matt or Junior. Raise your hand. Questions. Right there, Zach. Yep. Uh, Zach Albert, NASCAR.com. Uh, Matt, you kind of touched on this after winning Martinsville, but if you compare the two championship seasons with three wins combined in them versus this season, six wins, how do you rank them? And, and um, you've always said, you know, you don't look at points, but uh, the checkered flag is the thing. Is that the kind of the view after this year? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the first year, I mean, we, we wanted to get that championship and we won one race that year and a points race lot. And I'm not going to lie. And I, I just tried to not put myself in any bad positions. And we top five and top 10 them to death that year and didn't have any, like I said, I didn't make really any mistakes as in wrecking. And I mean, Junior didn't make any mistakes and tried and everybody had a great year the first year. And then after that, we got that first championship on our belt. He made me promise him that we weren't going to points race anymore because that drove him crazy because he knew we could win more races. <laughs> so then let's just go lead more laps. Let's win more races. Then last year we led more laps. We won more races. And then this year I said, these guys are unbelievable what they build these trucks up there in Sandusky, Iowa, and what Duke and Rhonda give us to be able to go out and win six races. And I, I say it each and every week. I don't worry about the points. And I haven't worried about the points. The last five races, six races, I knew I was going to have to be that much more aggressive. And I was. I mean, if you look at the last five races, how many laps we led, I guarantee we led most laps in 90% of those races. And we just had stupid stuff happen. I mean, if you look at Talladega, you got debris on the grill and had to fall to the back to get the debris off and then got caught up in a late race wreck and then last week was just racing hard I mean that was just I just took my gloves off and I said I knew I had to win that race and I was going to do whatever it took to win that race yes did I mean to wreck him absolutely not like I said it was just hard racing let's go to uh my man over here Kyle I saw you and then we'll go to Lee Al Magda, Race Chaser Online over here, guys. Uh, I got two questions for you, Matt. Uh, can you just talk about uh, the battle with John Hunter Nemechek there? 
Um, I know you two swapped the lead back and forth. Um, can you just talk a little bit more about that and then being able to drive away from him there in the closing laps? Oh, it, it, that was a lot of fun. I mean, the first run, we were good. We were really good on a short run, and that, the long run, we missed it a little bit. We got off, and I just kept communicating with him, and it's just amazing what Junior can do to these trucks. And we said we didn't want to jump on the other side of the fence and make it really, really free, and we made it a little bit better. And then the last run, it was just we hit a home run there. I mean, it's good on the short run and really, really good on the long run as well. Yeah, I know you, you battled with Tyler Reddick and Eric Jones all season. I mean, first, what did you think of Eric Jones? Um, he goes out, wins the title tonight. Um, I mean, what are, what are your thoughts about both of them? I'm um, just competing with them all season and uh, just learning more about them. Oh, I mean, it, Tyler Reddick's. I mean, that that kid has really, really, truly impressed me. If anybody goes back and looks and seen what that kid has came from, he's a little dirt racer. I mean, he's not an asphalt racer. And I remember watching him race last year. And like I said, I mean, I've told him before, he was a weapon last year. I mean, he was a dart without feathers. And then like I said, and then he's raced me for a championship this year. And I'm like, man, that kid must have had a off season and put it all together. And he was fast last year, but he just never could put a whole race together. And this year, he was very, very surprising. Uh, he's a good little race for driver. He's going to have a long, long career without a, without a doubt. And like I said, just hope we get him enough Kleenex. <laughs> Go ahead, dear Lee. <laughs> Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. Have you regretted or you know had any second thoughts about that move last weekend at Phoenix? Oh, I mean, yeah, you're definitely going to think about it. Yeah, man, what if I did that? And like I said, I, I told Junior, we talked about it. Man, what if I just lifted and then I could have drove back by him later and then we could have raced and maybe settled it right there at the end? And Junior said, no, absolutely not. You did everything you did. And that's that's what's so good about, like I said, me and Junior's relationship. We have each other's back regardless. It doesn't matter if, I mean, I would have just absolutely blew the corner, just wrecked, and it was a stupid thing. We have each other's back and said, I can honestly say no. I would have raced him just as hard and did everything what I did because if he wins that race, and even if I finished second, I was pretty much out of the championship. I knew I had to win that race, and I said I was going to do everything I possibly could. And, and you know, back on the trend with talking about the youngsters, <clears throat> what is it about John Hunter Nemechek that the kid is, just seems absolutely solid and can't get anything going with that race team as far as sponsorship, as far as somebody taking a look at him, you know, to give him an opportunity for a full-time gig. I mean, you know, is it just that tough right now in the series? Oh, it's absolutely that tough. And like I said, there's so many of these, like everybody else talks about the good crop of young drivers that there is, but there's, it's amazing how good equipment they're in. I mean, Eric Jones is a great, great race car driver, but he's in some of the best equipment. Tyler Reddick, I mean, he's a great race car driver. He's in great equipment. If you guys put these guys in some of the 15th place trucks, they're not going to run in the top five of them. I don't care how good they are. And that's what some people don't understand. I mean, John Hunter, I mean, they've got good equipment and everything, but to see what they do. And like I said, I know how hard that kid works and how hard his dad works and to see what we race with him. And he races his butt off. It's really, truly an accomplishment. What that family does was what they have. And finally, do you have any input on who's going to replace Sauter at your team next year? Nope. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we've talked. We've talked a lot. I mean, Duke and Duke has me a part of, like I said, all the drivers that have called, and he asked me my opinions on all of them. I mean, so I guess, yeah, I do have some opinion on them and sort of, like I said, feedback on it, I should say. <laughs> One final question over far right, Chris. Chris Knight, catchfence.com. Congratulations on the victory tonight. Speaking of Johnny Sauter, tonight was his last race with Thor Sport Racing. Can you talk about uh, what he's brought to the table and uh, how much of an uh, asset he's been to the program over the last several years? Oh, Johnny's a great, great race car driver. I mean, it's it's terrible that we're losing him because, I mean, he's been very good to the program. and He's helped the program to be where it is today. And I said I'm sure he's going to have a great success over where he's at. And he's going to be definitely one of the ones I think will race for championship. But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm focused on winning more races, winning more championships with Thor Sport. And like I said, to see what Duke and Rhonda Thorson have done with me in my career. And I think this is my 15th year with them, if I'm not mistaken. I left for one year and it was, like I said, it was very much a learning curve. And then I went back and started driving for them and to see what we've done. You're never going to meet, I can honestly say this, you're never going to meet a more loyal owner in the sport than Duke and Rhonda Thorson.